a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our felt the Lord saying that he is a God of forgiveness. No matter what you've done, or what you think you've done that's wrong, God is a God of forgiveness. He is a God that cares about you, cares about your life. He's not thinking of the things in the past. He's thinking of the things happening now and in the future. So just remember that God is a God of forgiveness and he loves you today.
so we thank you that she's with you today. She's finally free of all her pain and limitations, and she's in your presence. We pray today for Roy and for the family, close friends, that you will bring comfort and encouragement into their hearts and into their lives today. And, and that joy, and that, that door, I should say, that your presence would just really minister to Roy and his daughter at this time. In the name of the Lord, by your presence now, Lord, comfort. He's been expecting this for some time. Now he's, she's with you, so help him, Lord. Be with him, Lord. Lord, as he leaves that room, drives home, he's in at home with his daughter. It's comfort to be with him. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And all the friends, and even us here, Lord, remind us of the hope we have. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, as it says in St. Corinthians 5, verse 8. So thank you for that. Lord, we also turn our thoughts to uh, another matter, and uh, Lord, we pray for uh, Jessica McLaughlin's two boys, that they would be healed and improve as the day goes on, uh, Lord, uh, and uh, in the name of Jesus, yes. bring healing on their lives, in the name of Jesus. Lord, now as we go back into worship, uh, Lord, I thank you that Russ felt these songs on his heart. He just had this sense. He had no way of knowing to, but they, as he chose his songs, he was thinking about Marvick and that it was around this time that she would be going. And so he chose songs, thinking about that as well. And that's very cool. We thank you, Lord, for the, the moving of your spirit and how you talk to us and minister to us. And so... Lord, as we go back into worship, we invite your presence. We thank you for the word Jen shared with us today, and that brings comfort as well. And so anoint our worship team as we just continue in your presence, Lord. And Lord, we just invite you again, Lord, if you want to share anything with us prophetically or with a testimony this morning. We want to hear that, Lord, as it relates not only to this, but just to our lives, Father God. So we open our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. And listen, we really, really mean that. If you have a word from the Lord, uh, if you have a, a testimony or a prophetic word, we really want to hear that. We really, really want to hear that. We really, really, really want to hear that. Okay, so that's good. Amen. All right, go ahead, brother.
out um, in the heavens. And then, uh, as we began to praise this morning, there was one part of the worship where we all began to clap. And I knew something was began to break in the spirit. And what I saw was I saw a house, and it was on a it was on a cliff, a little bit of a cliff, but it was built into a hillside. And there was a part of it where the deck was hanging over, and underneath was built the stone wall. And uh, it began to, as we began to clap, it began to break. It was all, it was, the mortar was broken, and the, the uh, moss was all in the rocks. And as, when, as that fell away, then I saw just this wood that had been put up against um, the, the hillside uh, to support. And, and then I just, as we began to pray, I just began to see, um, the big construction hands of God, and he just began to build out a big cement bulwark um, for that, and just began to fill it in, and, and a deck began to be built on there. And, and when I asked him what that meant, I felt like he said, your house is rooted, and your house is on a firm foundation, but there's parts, parts where we, we're broken, and we need Jesus. And I believe today, that as we praised and worshiped those places of brokenness, those places where, where we need big help because we don't have the answer, and we put up as many layers and as many bulwarks and as many things as we can to try to support it, to try to make it look good, because the deck is usually out where everybody sees and what it looks good, but, but the Lord is saying, you know, I'm taking away all the old and I'm putting in something new. So he's our firm foundation. And as I was in my devotion today, I just want to share this today, is that the question was asked, what did Zacchaeus need? He needed a tree to see Jesus. And that's, what is your, what, what is there something in your life that you can do absolutely nothing about? Zacchaeus was short. Zacchaeus didn't have it yet all together. He was a mess. But he knew he needed Jesus. And he needed something beyond even seeing Jesus. He even needed the, the offer. How could he see Jesus? He needed a tree. And when Jen shared that about seeing beautiful golden trees, he's not, he, he gave Merabek a tree, what she yeah, did. That's true. But he's also here saying, you, I'm giving you a tree yeah. so that you can climb up and you can see. So he has had a problem, just like that bulwark that I saw in the spirit that was broken and a mess. So he was a mess. He was broken. And you know, all of us are broken. But, gee, but Zacchaeus needed Jesus. And he wasn't going to let his brokenness, he wasn't going to let those things that he felt so guilty about, those things that he, that he felt were so wrong, stop him from seeing Jesus. And when he saw Jesus, Jesus said, I'm coming to your house. And Zacchaeus was completely and radically changed. Yeah. And I believe today that Jesus is saying, believe. That I'm doing a work in your life. Believe that I'm here to change you, to build you up, to make you secure. And I'm changing you. Zacchaeus didn't just change and be quiet in the corner. He went and told everybody. He was giving that. He was giving him life. He was giving him encouragement. He was giving him power. And I believe today that God has woke Jen up this morning to show a tree. Yeah. And your tree is not just a regular ugly old tree. It's a silver tree. Silver in the Word of God stands for redemption. Gold stands for the pure nature of God. So that tree is not just a tree that's going to pass away. It's an eternal tree that God is giving each and every one of us. And it's on the pathway to heaven. So we just reach out now for Jesus to you. We do say, yeah. Jesus, we bring our needs to you. Yeah. We bring what we have, our brokenness to you yeah. right now. Those places where we just went to big hell. And we believe that you are making a way that you are giving us a place yes. where we can say, Jesus, you see us yes. come into our house yes. and make us more than we could ever yes. be. We thank you for re your redemption. Yes. We thank you for your nature yes. that we can reach out and yes. bring into our lives and become new creations in Christ. Yeah, right on. Good morning. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen.
So we have Children's Church this morning. How about that? Uh, we haven't been running it. To, uh, uh, we're not sure yet if, how regular it's going to be, but Margaret uh, said that uh, she would like to do it today. She talked to Stephanie, and Stephanie said, uh, sure, I'll give you a hand. So the two of them are going to do Children's Church this morning. And uh, so they'll be taking the children now, and you can just follow them both downstairs, and they have a program uh, for you today. So if the children would like to go down, you're very welcome. It's been a long time, and I know Margaret and Steph, you're looking forward just to kind of connecting with you, and so you're very welcome to go down. It's just downstairs. It's a great place down there and uh, an opportunity to connect. And uh, mom or dad, if you want, you're welcome to go down and see what's going on. So why don't you just go down just to make things, you know, just make sometimes it helps your children feel a little more comfortable so you feel free just to go down there and introduce and so forth. That's all good too. All right, good. So uh, just a few uh, announcements to make this morning. Um, again, as is uh, kind of a broken record, but that's okay. It's my record. Uh, uh, and, and, if we're on a reservation system for Sunday, and so uh, I just need some form of communication. That's all I ask, and it uh, makes it easier for me. It's uh, uh, People are doing pretty good, but every once in a while I feel like i got to be a detective, and it just makes it a little easier if I know what's going on, you know? So I have some people who just say, hey, uh, I'm down every week, uh, if that's okay, and if I'm going to be away, I'll let you know, and that works. Or you can uh, phone me, or... or uh, text me or message me in some form, uh, as long as I know by Saturday morning, because I do try to make an effort to uh, make sure the chairs are, are, are okay. At one point, uh, I counted, I had 39 set of people that were coming this morning, and so I'm trying to make sure that it's all done appropriately for social distancing, so you can enjoy the Lord and each other's company in a safe way. So uh, we're doing really good at it, but it doesn't hurt to keep... Uh, mentioning that all right so thanks for that and thanks for your cooperation you're being very very good with it it means a lot um, again um, we have altar ministry every church service uh, after service sometimes during the service we haven't done that for a while but we do if we feel led but uh, always after church and so if you want to uh, ministry at the altar just put your mask on come on up those that are going to be at the front that are praying uh, will also have uh, their masks on as well uh, board meeting tomorrow night. Uh, tomorrow night is board meeting, 7 o'clock. Uh, and uh, water baptismal service on December the 6th. Quite excited about that. So we've got two people who want to get baptized in water. If anybody else is interested, please uh, speak to me. I'd be glad to talk to you about that. So those are exciting times when people make that decision that they love the Lord and they want to let everybody know that Jesus is their Savior. So water baptism, December 6th. Sunday morning. Uh, one other thing, I just wanted to thank Donovan and Adrian for their assistance in helping and blessing our community on Remembrance Day. Uh, last time I looked was, was about a day or so ago, and there was over 730 some odd views the last time I checked. Maybe there's more that probably keeps going up every day. But we were able to, we couldn't have a regular Remembrance Day service down at the Cenotaph. And uh, so, uh, the executive got together at uh, around 8, 8.30 on Remembrance Day morning and uh, just we were just going to do a, a few thoughts and just a prayer and then set everything up so the people through the day could pay their respect. But then I was talking to Donovan, and bless his heart, and he said he'd be willing to tape the service. Uh, and so we just had a short rendition of a 10-minute kind of a condensed Reader's Digest kind of a service and he did a phenomenal job and Adrian was there too and they set that up and it, it was just such a blessing. I want to mention that today just simply not just because it, it was a church thing but it was a community thing and I just think it's exciting when we do stuff for our town right Donovan just blessing our town and so you blessed our town so thanks for just stepping up and using your gift set and everybody else that helped you. Uh, I thought it was fabulous and uh, I know the Legion was thrilled. I know Cliff was walking around every time he saw somebody when they came by at 11 o'clock. So we went back down at 11 again, just in case we knew people were going to come by around 11 just to pay their, put their coffee down on the cross. And, and he'd walk over and he'd say, well, it's going to be, it's going to be on the Legion website. You know, Cliff, one of our executive people. So it meant a lot to the Legion. So thanks for blessing us. And that's really what we're trying to do, right? We want to bless our town. 
want to bring life to our town, use our gifts and our skills in any way we can, right? So, so I appreciate everything that uh, everyone's doing that way. All right, well, listen, let's look into God's Word today. We uh, thank you, Lord, for your Word and the opportunity to be in your Word today, the opportunity to be in a place that we can freely worship you and bless you. We just love you, Lord, today. We pray as we look into the Word of God today that again you will just rain down on us that your Spirit would illuminate your Word to us in a way that makes sense to our spirits, that makes sense to these brains and these minds, but more than makes sense to our minds, but penetrates into our hearts. That's due from heaven. Uh, we pray, Lord Jesus, Lord, you know, we live in this world and we, we want to we want to serve you and we, we, we want to sense your life. And so we're just here, Lord, as a people that want your touch and uh, want to bring glory to you, Lord. So, so take your word and Speak as you would into our lives, in Jesus' name, amen. Right on. Well, I felt like I'd continue on where, where I was last week, and I, I started last week talking about uh, God's Word being seed, and then we looked at uh, Luke's Gospel, chapter 8, where Jesus talked about, about the sower going out and sowing the seed into the, on the different types of ground and soil. And so uh, I just want to talk about that again today, how that God's word is like a seed, that seeds that just nurture our heart. And so in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 8 and verse 4, I'm just going to read the story again. Gospel of Luke, we find it in a few places in the Gospels. Mark 4 is often referred to as well. But we're looking at Luke chapter 8, the same story. And in, in the fourth verse, we read this in Luke chapter 8. It said, while a large crowd was gathered, and people were coming to Jesus from town after town. He told this parable. A farmer went out to sow his seed. And as he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path it was trampled on. And the birds of the air ate it up. Some fell on rock. And when it came, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seed fell among thorns which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, and it came up and yielded a crop a hundred times uh, uh, more than was sown. Mark says 60, 30, 100 fold. So just interesting how different Gospels pick up different pieces of it. But I'd like to speak about that today. Uh, the parable before us, the story before us that Jesus tells, conveys about how the Word of God comes alive. Uh, the seed, again, refers to the Word of God. And the sower, of course, is Jesus Christ. And so he's talking to his disciples and to those that are there. And he said the sower went out and took his seed and he placed it upon the soil. Now, who's the sower? It's Jesus Christ. All these stories and all these things that have been going on that uh, had, had brought life to people and healing to people and freedom to people and brought glory to the Lord. And so he puts it in this farming terminology. And, and, and you know, when we think of Jesus' words, when they went out, they certainly were full of life and power and encouragement. It was full of good news. People hung on every word. They just wanted to hear him. Not, you know, because there was, it was different than when the religious leaders spoke or philosophers of the day gave a word to try and encourage. It was, there was... The Holy Spirit was on what he said. And it just really impacted. But, you know, the neat thing is, is that, that Jesus is still speaking. His word is still speaking. And so even as his word went through, when he walked on earth some 2,000 years ago, his word is still going forth. And it still germinates. It still releases life in the soil of our hearts right now and right here. It says in Psalm 107 and verse 20, Psalm 107 says, He sent His word and healed them. He sent His word and healed them. Well, Jesus Christ is the word. He was sent in this world and He brought healing. But His word, the word of the living God in flesh, incarnate, when His word is brought forth, when He speaks out who He is, 
And that life in him comes forth. That seed, it brings healing into our lives. The parable before us is so cool. It, it, it's talking about life impartation. And if you follow it through in Luke 8, verse 12 through 15, it says, it says this, this seed saves sozo lives. S-O-Z-O. That is, it, it, it is saves, it, it brings eternal life. It, it delivers from danger. It brings, takes us from, frees us, saves us from suffering and saves us from bondage. It, it releases, saves us from sickness, bringing health and bringing wholeness. That's, that's a big word when we use that word save, right? And then it goes on in Luke chapter 8, verse 13, 14, 15, and says, when, when Jesus brought his word, not only did it set people free from bondage and people were healed and suffering was taken away and diminished and delivered from freedom and all of that, but it also, it, he's pointing out that the intent with his word as well is that it brings joy. God's full of joy, you know? Religion is... Stuff for rules and regulations is all stuffy stuff, but, but life in Christ was intended to bring us joy. Yeah. Why do you think people want to hang on with the Lord, you know, because they were doing penance, because they thought they had a bunch of stuff, so let's go listen to Jesus so we can feel worse, you know? You know, like, what's that all about, right? That's not God. That's not good news, right? Jesus brought joy. That's what he's talking about here. And the intent was maturity, that you grow in him and desire to be more like the Lord in your life. And the results are harvest, fruit. All of that is mentioned in there, right? So last week I spoke about the hard path. And today I'm going to talk about rocky soil, crowded soil, and fruitful soil. So three more, rocky soil, crowded soil, and fruitful soil. And I noticed Margaret told me on Sunday I was starting to drift again, you know. So I was talking to Russ and Jen, I was way over there, then I was way over here, and so forth. So I was getting away from the camera. So, so I decided to write some, so I put another layer of green tape here, just to sort of say, stand, there's your boundaries. I'm not sure I'll pay attention to it, but I get that. <laughs> so there you go. And I don't let anybody else put it up, because then I can't blame anybody but myself. So, so there, so I made that a little bold. Anyway, so we'll see if that works. But the first thing is rocky soil. And so, as we look at it, we talked about the hard path last week. Today, I want to continue on to talk about the rocky soil. So, in verse 6, it says that the sower, so Jesus Christ, you know, he goes out and he's sowing the seed. He's using the farming dirt, and it went on the hard path, right? But, but then he says, some of the seed fell on rocky soil. Fell on the rocks and rocky soil. You know, some places in, 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 in that part of the world... In the Israel, often the soil lays on a layer of limestone. And so even though you sometimes see the rocks or the gravel, sometimes you don't, you know, it, it can be a very thin layer. And so even when it seems to appear to have gone into the soil, it really hasn't. It's so, so thin, I should be having cursed enough talking about this piece. But, but, but you know, it, it's, it's so thin that... That, that there's not much soil there, so, so it germinates, but there's just, sort of germinates, but there's just not enough root system, there's not enough moisture that, that, the, uh, that, the, that things can grow well. It goes on, it says in the sixth verse, that it needs moisture, you can't get the moisture, because it's on rocks, right? Some translations translate it says it fell on gravel, gravelly soil. Says, which is interesting as well. But the point is, Jesus said, some of it went on a hard path, some of it went on gravel, some of it went on rock, some of it went on some very, very thin soil with rock underneath. The point Jesus is trying to say is, is that the seed needs moisture. That's what he's trying to say. It, the seed needs moisture. And you know what? Moisture, it, it's a parable, it's a picture, right? That's he's trying to say. So, so Jesus is saying, I'm like the sower, the farmer, I take the soil and I and I take it out, and I'm just, and I'm, I'm just pouring it out on hearts, you know, because I'm generous. Because but why would he put it on some rocks and ones where there's a thorn? Why don't you just take it one and put it here and take one out further? Because he's generous and he's gracious and he's full of love. So Lord, he, he just, he's just sending his word out to whosoever will. He, who will receive? I'm just, I love the whole world. I want everybody to 
it all means. He's sending out his word. You sure, right? But some soils are ready for it. And some soils are not ready for it or resistant to the seed of his word in his life. But the point again is that soil needs moisture. I mean, I mean, the seed needs moisture, right? And moisture is referring to the Holy Spirit. When we look into the Word of God, we need the Holy Spirit to take the seed of His Word and breathe life on it. Isn't that right? Your posture must be one that desires to receive the Word of the Lord, to receive it by the, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Say, Lord, I'm opening up your book again, uh, you know, or I'm listening again. I want to hear your voice. That's why we pray. Lord, speak to me. I want, I want to take it in. I need the moisture of your spirit. I really, really do, Lord, in my life. You know, I live in a real world. I, I have responsibilities. I want to make a difference. I want to be salt or, or I'm in need of healing or I need encouragement. Whatever it is that we're needing. Sometimes we're thinking about the things we need. Sometimes we're thinking about the world we're trying to touch. Sometimes we're a mix. Usually we're a mix of both, right? But the point is that the Bible says, let the moisture of the Holy Spirit come in and take that seed of his word and let it germinate and grow in your lives, right? And so, so in Isaiah chapter 44, verse 3, says this. Isaiah 44, verse 3, talking about this. Let's read it here in a moment. Some of you are looking it up. I hear the pages. I like that. It says Isaiah. Your page is moving. That's good. <laughs> Isaiah 44, verse 3. Did anybody find an app that does that yet? For stand the pages turning? We're looking. Isaiah 44, verse 3, it says, For I will pour water on the thirsty land and streams on the dry ground. I will pour out my spirit on your offspring and my blessing on your descendants. Well, what, is, what is he saying there? He said, I will pour out moisture. I will pour out on a land that is thirsty. It is a posture of your heart that I thirst after your spirit, Lord. I want you. It's not a feeling. Thank God I don't have to manufacture a feeling, right? But it is, a, it is an act of my mind and my spirit and my will. However you want to look at that, I'm just, Lord, I want you. I need your spirit, right? 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 Sure it is, man. I've been there. You know, I wake up in the morning early, and I, I, I like to do that before the phones and messenger and texting and everything else start going, and I get a cup of coffee. That's the first thing on the day. And, and, and I sit down, and I get my coffee, and I'm there, and sometimes I feel real perky, you know. Other times I feel, oh, I'm just moaning, you know, right, you know, and I get my coffee, and, and then I'm just open up my Bible, right? And I say, Lord, I sure need your help. You know, like I'm trying to get this through this cranial plate into my spirit when I pray. And what, why are you saying all that? Because I'm saying sometimes I really feel it. Oh, Lord, we had a great time yesterday. I can hardly wait. Other times I'm there and it's just like, Lord, I, I need your spirit. And the Lord knows I'm not feeling it. Right? You know? Right? But I need, it doesn't change the fact, right? So that's thirst. You know? So, I bring my water bottle with me when I go to the office now, and I'm even starting to drink it more, like, you know, drink water more. I, I'm in terrible at drinking water. I just don't know what that is miles about me. But, I, but, 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 but the neat thing about this now is it measures, and I can tell what I'm drinking, right? But the first few times I'd bring this, it'd sit home and get home, and it was still full, right? <laughs> yeah. And I thought, there's a problem here, right? I'm just drinking coffee, right? And not that there's anything wrong with coffee. But, but I mean, I should be drinking water too. But you know what? I discovered that sometimes my body's thirsty and I haven't figured it out yet. Because thirst is more than a feeling, right? Most of, you know? Right? Isn't that right? So I will pour my spirit on a thirsty 
We're not talking about your emotions here. We're talking about something beyond that in your spirit, that the Spirit of God just knows you need yes. that, right? And so you were agreeing with that. You were agreeing with heaven in that. So never feel like goofy or feel like you're off or something because you're saying something that you're not feeling. It's not about what you're feeling. It is a response and obedience to the word of the Spirit of God. So I agree with heaven. I am thirsty. Yeah. Yeah. And so he says, I will pour water on a thirsty land and streams on a dry ground. I will pour up my spirit on your offspring and my blessing on your descendants. And then I felt convicted this morning to add the next five words from verse 4 which says they will spring up yeah. Yeah. I wasn't even thinking of that verse and then I just felt the Spirit look at the next verse they will spring up yeah. it'll spring up so there's some seed and it's going on the rocks and so forth but then it gets on the good ground and it springs up springs up, something takes place. And so, take as an example, we find the example of how Jesus feeds the 5,000. It's all interrelated here. So, Jesus feeds the 5,000. Now, last, last week, we talked about the five loaves and the two fish, and how the disciples had, had a hard heart. And because of their hard hearts, Jesus Christ, he came out walking on the water. Remember the story? He walks out onto the water, and uh, the disciples were overwhelmed and shocked when Jesus got into the boat and the storm died down. And they couldn't, they couldn't know, who is this, right? And they said that because their hearts were hardened, they said. They didn't get the message of the loaves and the fish and feeding the 5,000. Now, I want to kind of look at another piece of that. Turn, turn to something else that kind of goes along with that. John chapter 6, verse 27. John 6, 27. John 6, verse 27. 26 and 27. So I'm going to read the 26 verse of John 6 verse. I'll go to verse 25. When, when, when they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Now these, this, is, this is going back to feeding the 5,000 again. We talked about the disciples. Remember they rode all night. Talked about that last week, right? They didn't understand. Jesus got into the boat and and the winds all died down, they didn't get where they were because their hearts were hard. But, but there's another piece of this story, and that's the crowd. All those that were there, they got fed, right? That 10, 15,000 people, because there were guys, there were ladies there, there were families, there were kids, right? And, I mean, they, they were amazed when Jesus caused all that food to just be multiplied, right? And so the next day, they went looking for him, right? And so... And so Jesus, they, so they find him. They, they, they track him down on the other side of the, of the lake. And it says this. Jesus answered to them. He said, he said, they, they said, Rabbi, when did you get here? You know, you left. We're looking for you. And, and Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth. You are looking for me not because you saw miraculous signs, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Isn't that interesting? Huh? Isn't that interesting? You saw the miraculous signs, but because you ate the loaves and had your, you didn't see what the signs were pointing to. You didn't read the sign. You saw the sign, but you did not interpret the sign. You did not see what the sign was for and what the sign was pointing towards. That's what he's trying to say. You're here because it fed you. You're not looking at what that was a sign about, right? That's what he's saying there. They saw only the surface without any concern for what was underneath, for what that was pointing to. Then in the 27th verse, Jesus goes on and he says, Do not work for the food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. On him God the Father has placed his seal of approval. He says, don't just work, I fed you. You're here because I fed you. But don't make that your focus. What was going on when I fed you? Who, what does that tell you about who I am? What does that tell you about the words I'm sharing with you? What does that tell you? You're Jesus. You're the Messiah. You're the Savior. You're the Son of God. You're the healer. 
You have the very words of God. All those things and more is what he's saying there, right? I tell you something. Jesus wants us to receive light. And so again, we see rocky soil. It's just, it doesn't, it doesn't see that. It's, it's, it sees that, maybe sees the miracle, but doesn't, doesn't allow, it doesn't penetrate the heart it's the same way. That's why we need the moisture of the Holy Spirit to help us get it, to read the sign, right? To be able to say, okay, well, what's that sign mean? I'm not getting it. And allowing the Spirit of God to help that become real. So anyway, so there's rocky soil. Then there's crowded soil. Verse 7. And so the crowded soil, uh, you know, that's talking about the weeds and the thorns. And so the weeds choke off the nourishment. And they stunt the growth. And then we find they do that. They, they have a way of uh, robbing our time and robbing our energy. Uh, weeds are like that. So, so the sower comes, Jesus, his word comes, and he's planting a seed, and it falls among thorns. Falls among the weeds. Well, what's going on? Well, you got to get rid of the weeds, right? You plant a garden sower. It's, 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 it's taking the nourishment. It's taking the moisture from, from the plants. It's, it's crowding them out. And so what's he saying here? Well, from a spiritual perspective, we're saying God's word begins to speak to us, and the Lord's trying to, to, to help it to bring life, to bring healing. He sent his word and he healed them, delivered them from all their destruction. Psalm 107, verse 20 again, like what I said earlier. But he's, but, he's, but he's saying what can happen, this stuff has a way of robbing our time and robbing our energy that we would put into him, and put into the word that he would give us. Uh, Stuff can crowd out our devotional life, crowd out our spiritual rhythms, crowd out the energy that we have even to ponder His Word. See, what they needed to do that day when they were fed by Jesus Christ was to take the energy and the time to ponder on the implications of what that was, right? So we hear a testimony. Let's take the energy and the time to listen to the Holy Spirit to what is he saying in that to me? What is he saying to me? Is there something prophetically he's saying to me? Is there something? If somebody gets up and, and, and talks about how they were healed. What is that saying to me? It's saying he's the healer. Yeah. Right? Someone gets up and they talk about how they, they prayed for a job and they got their prayer answers. What's that saying to me? The Lord provides. Right? Someone gets up and they talk to me about how they were having struggles and some other in their life. It, it's, it's speaking to me. But it's speaking to me more about feeding me. It's speaking to me about who he is. Yeah, good point. Who he is. Yeah. And he's the same. Yesterday, today, forever, he's still the same. And so then he goes on talking about the crowded soil. And he talks about, in, in verse 14, he says there's worries and there's riches and the pleasures of life. Oh, worry is such a terrible thing, isn't it? Anxiety. Anxiety can push us from God. Anxiety and fear, worries, any, anything like that. It's fear-based. It, it, it works in opposition to faith. Take the story of Peter. Another piece of the same, same story we're talking about here, right? So, so here we are. Jesus finishes feeding the 5,000. He goes up to pray. Sends, sends the lads out across the water. They get out there in the middle of the storm, right? And Jesus walks out on the water, right? And we, we talked about that. And, and he gets in the boat. And they're saying, who is he? Because of their hard hearts, right? Uh, then the next day, the crowds show up. And they're saying, Lord, how'd you get here, right? And he said, you're seeking me because of, you know, I fed you, right? But in that whole middle of that whole story, there's another piece in that story. And that is that... Jesus comes out walking in the water, and Peter says, Hey, Lord, can I come out walk on the water with you? Remember that part of the story? That's in there too, right? That's a, there's so many facets to this story. This is all after that feeding of the 5,000. And so, anyways, and so the Lord says, Come. So he gets out of the boat, and he puts a foot down on the water. Don't get on Peter. Don't get on Peter because he started to sink. At least he got out of the water. He got out of the boat. He got out of the boat. That's right, Cheryl. Yeah, he got out of the boat, right? <laughs> got out of his comfort zone. He was but anyway, he, he did start walking on the water. But then what happened? He started to get anxious, right? He started
started to get anxious. And as he got anxious, he allowed his anxiety to take his eyes off of Jesus. He got, began to sense the water. And he got thinking about this doesn't make any sense or whatever he was thinking. And he began, began to sink. He got his eyes off the Lord. But the Lord still reached out, right? And brought him back up to the top of the water and took him out at that time. But the point I'm, I'm trying to get at during the sequence of events what is that Peter became anxious and he began to sink. Worry can do that. And so in the crowded soil, where it's crowded up by worry, uh, the, the, good, the good seed is also crowded up by riches and the pleasures of life as well. And the Lord wants us to enjoy life, yes, but sometimes the riches that we have, the good stuff that we have. It's funny what riches are like. It's those that are rich, right? So uh, if we had gone over with, uh, uh, you went to Africa, right, Marilyn and, and, and Jen, you were over there. If you went over there, they would probably think we're pretty wealthy here, right? But us sitting in the room here, we don't think we're wealthy. We're thinking somebody else that's wealthy, right? You know, that's got a lot more than we did, right? It's, so it's all kind of relative that way. But, but, but we do have a lot of stuff, a lot of good things, right? In our life, lives. So, so we should just apply it to somebody that's got a lot more than we do, right? We have a tendency to cut ourselves out of this. We can sort of identify with worry thing, but 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 not this one. But listen, listen, we do have a lot. And and, and the point the Lord is trying to say to us, listen, he says, I have no problem. I have absolutely no problem with you guys having things. I don't have a problem with that. I want you to be able to enjoy life and 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 and, and all that. I don't I don't have a problem with that. I just don't want the stuff to have you. Right. You can have stuff, but I don't want the stuff to have you. You know what I'm saying? He, so that's what he's talking about. He says it's okay to enjoy life. I, 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 there's nothing wrong with having good hobbies. Uh, fishing, hunting, hiking, windsurfing, biking, watching music, canoeing. What were you saying? Watching TV. Watch <laughs> TV. <laughs> watching TV. That's one of my list. <laughs> so, so, but all these things. God doesn't mind that we have these things, but He doesn't want them to all this to set the agenda in our lives, right? Uh, do you know what dirt is? Do you know what dirt is? <laughs> you be careful out of where you're saying, but I think <clears throat> You know what dirt is? Dirt is good soil out of place. That's one definition. Dirt is good soil out of place. I remember we lived out in Manitoba once in a while. Once in a while. To help Saskatchewan, get the, the winds can get up. Hey, brother, pretty, 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 pretty uh, heavy there sometimes. But I can remember we lived in Service, Manitoba, and, and sometimes the winds would get up and, and you'd end up with this dirt on the outside of your house, you know, or on the side of your house. So for all you went up to somebody's or went up to a farm house after the storm, a friend of mine, you know, from the church go for a visit or something, and you see you see dirt up against the side of the house or the doorways and so on and so forth, right? It was dirt. What was it? It was good soil out of place. Right? It was good soil. Out of place. And, and so the Lord doesn't mind us having stuff. He doesn't want the stuff to have us. He, he, he doesn't want us to have good soil out of place. Our priority must be Him. He must be the focal point in our lives. And when He is, we're okay, right? We're, we're better than okay. We, 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 we want Him in our lives, right? Uh, and the other problem sometimes with riches or pleasures in life or or, or, or or the things that we have and the material things that we have at times, it begins to give us an artificial sense of control in our lives that, that you know, we think we're in control because of the things we have or because of the what's in our accounts or because of uh, the vehicle we're driving or whatever else. We, we, we get an artificial sense of control not recognizing how quickly that can dissipate on us. Really, there's one who's in control, and he holds it all, and his name is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And, 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 and what he's saying, he says, stuff can crowd our 
lives. And what can happen in all of that is if we're not careful, if we don't keep that in the right place in our lives, our souls become crowded and so the seed of his word is not able to penetrate us because, because of just the, the way our hearts are working. So Jesus is going by and he's thrown off this soil and it's just not having the impact because people are hungry, they're not desperate for him, they're not thirsty for him, they don't recognize that he is what they really need in their lives. But he says, there is fruitful soil, and I'm so glad he didn't stop on this one, because it's not too motivating. <laughs> but he finishes it off, and he talks about, the point is, that my seed out of the word will bring fruit in your life. That it is destined to bring fruit in your life. It is destined. You know, you can have good seed. How, how long would good seed last, uh, Kirsten? Like, how, how long could you keep good seed around? Like, for a month or two? Or for a, how, how, how long would it last? Good seed? So if it's good seed and you took care of it, it could last a year or two at all. Years. In granaries? Granaries. Yeah. Granaries. Yeah. Years. Yeah. yeah. Keep it dry. Yeah. If, you keep, if, you keep, oh, if you keep it dry, right. so it could last for years. Or in freezer. Yeah. In the freezer. So, so, good, so you could, if you had it for a, a long time, if you took care of it, you get moisture, you froze it, or you put it in the granaries, or whatever, it could last quite a while. Yeah. Still good seed. Do you know sometimes... Good seed. You, you, we get down on ourselves because we're not seeing seeing the fruit we'd like to see in our lives. But you know what, what the good thing is about good seed? It doesn't have a shelf life when we're talking about the kingdom. Stuff that's been sown in you. The Spirit of God can come down and, and at the right time, we're not just, just the dew of heaven comes in and just touches the seed that's in your heart and it comes to fruition. It comes to fruit. It comes to life. Isn't that right? It's like one of the stories I tell of, of, of a fellow that was a, a terrible firestorm on a 747 jet down in the Canary Islands and he, he'd been a, gone to Sunday school, gone to children's church when he was a little boy and he grew up and he ended up in this terrible terrible accident where two 747s uh, collided on, on a runway in the Canary Islands back in the mid-1970s, uh, and there was a firestorm, and, and he was he was in the plane. I heard him at a whole gospel business tell a story, and, and he saw the flames coming and people being consumed in front of him, and all of a sudden, he, he somehow managed to get himself out into the aisle uh, in the plane, and, the, and, and then he just saw a fireball coming towards him, and a verse of scripture that he hadn't thought about for years. I mean, he wasn't even walking with the Lord at that time. He'd gone to Sunday school. And out of his spirit, the Holy Ghost just, just lit upon a seed that was in him. That they shall walk through the fire and they shall not be burned. He just bubbled up from within his spirit. And the next thing he knew, as he put his, began to sort of put his hands up, the next thing he knew, he was on the wing. He had no clue how he got on the wing of the plane. So it only makes sense to him as an angel of God came along and swooped down when he spoke the word of God and lifted him out of that fire blaze and took him out. Listen, a seed can lie dormant. But when you pray for the moisture of the Holy Ghost to come upon you, the life of God, it'll take His Word and make it real. And it, it'll, it'll begin to, 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 to germinate. And all of it, it, it doesn't take years. So it's like, okay, well, it's beginning to germinate, so maybe someday, you know, we'll get this. This guy took like a half a second, right? The Spirit of God can come upon you and take that Word that's within you. And just breathe upon it and it become life that brings healing and deliverance. Or that allow you to speak a word into somebody's life that will set them free and bring encouragement. And so the fruitful soil comes. And so Jesus said the fruit will come. And in one, one, uh, one gospel says 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. Uh, I, I was reading one article, one commentator said, 
one commentator said that the story of the history of the land in Israel and so forth, you know, that uh, if they got a tenfold return, they thought, man, that's, that's a huge, huge return on the sea. If you got a tenfold return. But he says 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold return. Listen, when the Lord comes, the Spirit of God touches his word. It's powerful. It's potent. It's, it, there's a weight to it in life. It says in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 22, it says this, and, and uh, I don't know what time I started from this one. <laughs> in, in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 22, it says, it says this, and I'm pretty looking at their watch, I should have said that. So it says, those who discover these words live, they really live. I love that. Body and soul, and they're bursting with health. Keep vigilant. Watch over your hearts. That's where life starts. And so then you go to Psalm 119. And Psalm 119 is full of talking about the life of God's Word. Just quickly, I'm not going to give the, the references. You can get them from me later if you want them. But characteristics of the fruit of His Word. It says this. It keeps us from sin. It revives. This is Psalm 119. It keeps us from sin. It revives us. It encourages us. It gives us life. It comforts us. It gives us wisdom. Gives us understanding. Gives us direction. Gives us hope. Yeah. There's a few things it says in Psalm 119. When Jesus spoke, he was the sower sowing the word. And he brought healing. He brought freedom. He brought deliverance. He brought her. So all he said, in the middle of all, he said seven times as I close, Jesus says seven times in that song, in that in that parable, he said, here, listen to me, here. Last week we said, so just how do you touch your heart? Soak in his word, just soak in his presence, just simply respond. And I had one more this morning, I just say this, just, just. Just listen. Mm -hmm. Just listen. You know, we get to make it so complicated, but the Lord worked so hard by working on the cross and dying for us to make it simple. Yeah. Isn't that right? And he said, just listen. Just listen. Just listen. And you'll get past the hard path. You'll get past the crowded stuff and the thorns. So Holy Spirit, help us to listen. We pray that the word that has been sold in our life today, but in days gone by, will, will be moistened by the work of the Holy Spirit. All that's there, Lord, Lord, that you will bring the harvest and fruit in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. You see us where we're at today, and we know where you need to breathe to impart to us today. We pray you do that now, Lord, where we're at. We receive that in the name of Jesus. We receive that in the name of Jesus. We choose to listen. In your name, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Amen. Amen. Well, bless you. Real good. Good to see everybody this morning. And if anybody would like prayer, I know there are those of us up here that we just would love to agree with you, pray with you. It's our honor and privilege to do that. We just love to do that. So, so if you'd like prayer this morning,